Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hoag, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm AJ Hoag, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native, father of the Effortless English System, creator of the Business English Conversations course, and of course, my VIP program. Join. Get the course, the Business English course. Join my VIP program. Commit, don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there. Today's topic, we're going to talk about language learning and the, mo in my opinion, in my opinion and in my experience, in my experience, the number one most important thing for learning English, for learning any language, and that is motivation. Motivation, motivation. And of course, some of you know, you know, it's obvious, but I say again and again that the number one cause of failure is quitting. Quitting is the number one cause of failure. If you quit, if you stop doing it, then you fail or you stop improving. And I can use my own Spanish as an example of that. Uh, it's both a good, I, it's, it's a good story and a bad story in a way. It's kind of good news and bad news. So the bad news is that four and a half years ago, I stopped doing Spanish. I just, I quit. The good news is that I didn't lose much. Now I'm doing Spanish again, and, and um, I'm basically right at that same level. I didn't go backwards very much, which is great news. So anyway, we'll talk about this, because the obvious thing is that motivation is important. It's, I'd say, more important than method. That's why in my book, in my book, the first half of my book is really about motivation and psychology, because it's the more important part. Method's important, but motivation's more important. We're live on YouTube today. Lots of people just saying hi. Hello to Vladislav and more, and Mohammed and Asma, Swahib, Zayad, uh, Leandro, good to see you. Uh, Melena in Sicily, good to see you again. Ibrahim Ali, uh, always good to see you, of course. Ronan, good to see you. Elena, Paulika, so lots of our regulars. Nasser there, Lisa, hello. You'll recognize these names if you. Watch or listen to the show often. A lot of folks joining our regulars. Then they, they ask great questions. They give great comments. Very interesting discussion. It's why I like doing this live. It's very enjoyable for me to do live for that reason. So welcome, welcome. Just a couple minutes to uh, let everybody join, and then we'll get into our topic. Now, quickly a reminder that Evgeny, Evgeny, good to see you. <laughs> uh, Samit, good to see you. A quick reminder that uh, this coming week, starting Saturday, so for me it's Thursday right now, it's Thursday in Japan at the moment, so two days, I'll probably do one more show, hopefully one more show tomorrow, and then I probably have a week off because my sister is visiting, my sister and my niece. So there's niece and nephew, a little quick English, niece and nephew. And, you know, honestly, I, even as a native speaker, I used to get these confused. I used to, I had to think a little bit, like, which one's nephew, which one's niece? <laughs> it's not obvious. Uh, but basically, your nephews and nieces, these are, if you're an uncle or an aunt, it's your, it's the children of your brothers or your sister, right? Your, your brother's children or your sister's children, those are your nephews and your nieces. Nephews are the boys, nephews are boys, and nieces are girls. So it's my sister is visiting and her daughter. And her daughter's my niece. I'm her uncle. They're visiting Japan for the first time. So I will be, you know, be a good host and a good tour guide showing them around Japan. You know, we'll be visiting my wife's family. And so probably going to be quite busy. And we'll see, though. I don't know if they go to bed early, earlier than I do and I have a little time in the evening, then I might do like some surprise shows next week. I hope so. Uh, definitely not Saturday, Not so no, no book club, unfortunately. We'll have to uh, delay that one. 
But anyway, I'll do my best to do at least a couple shows next week. I'll try. Now, good news. Some of you know who Steve Kaufman is. He's from uh, Link, L-I-N-G-Q, a language learning site. He's a linguist. He speaks many, many, many languages. And yeah, I've been a fan of Steve's for a long time, since before Effortless English, in fact. And uh, anyway, he's visiting Japan with his son, Mark, who also speaks several languages, who I believe is kind of the CEO now of Link. But anyway, they're both visiting Japan. They're going to a polyglot conference in Japan. Polyglot means many languages, people who speak many languages. And uh, Steve's speaking there, but they're also visiting Japan and they're coming through Osaka. So Steve and I are emailing. We're trying to figure out a date. We have a few days and we will figure out an exact date. We're going to meet in Osaka, uh, Steve and I and Mark. And I think we're going to have a meetup. So we're going to invite fans also, you know, members and fans of Effortless English and of Link. So maybe we'll have a, a nice size group meet up somewhere, maybe a coffee shop or a restaurant or something somewhere in Osaka. And Steve wants to make a video when, while, when we meet. So I'll make a video with Steve. We're going to do an interview. I don't know if we'll do an interview in Osaka or just, you know, like this online. Uh, sometimes interviews... I find it's easier online because the sound's better. I have a good microphone here. Everything's quiet. Uh, to do an interview in a coffee shop where it's kind of loud. We'll see, though. We'll probably try. We'll try to do maybe at least a short little conversation together. Steve and I, maybe Mark also. And uh, talking about language learning and mini stories and learning more than one language. A lot of these great topics. So that's great. So he'll be coming on the show soon. All right, let's get into the topic really quickly, guys. Our topic is motivation. The motivation is number one. It's, you know, if you look, if you really just think about it for a minute, it's quite obvious that it's probably most important because quitting is the obvious way to fail, right? There are many things in life, not all, but many things in life that you can eventually learn or eventually do if you just don't quit. Like, even if you use bad methods, You'll go slower, you'll learn more slowly, the results will be worse, but with some things, you know, eventually you, you maybe get good enough, okay? Like I would say running would be one of those things, running. If you, could, if you just keep doing it, your body will get better, right? Same with lifting weights. There are a lot of good programs and systems for lifting weights where, you know, you get the best results in the shortest time, and the, the fewest injuries, all of that. But, you know, if you just kind of work your muscles every day and just make some effort, you know, eventually you will get stronger. You might not become Arnold Schwarzenegger, but you'll get stronger, right, if you don't quit. And language is like this somewhat. Uh, with Now, with bad methods, unfortunately, you know, it's hard to get to really to a level of fluency, I think. But you can at least kind of get to even a basic level of communication if you just do it long enough. Of course, if you use good methods, it's much faster, it's more enjoyable, all of these things. But part of what I, when I say good methods, though, one of the most important things when you choose a method is that the method has to be motivating to you. See, we know that like the grammar study and the textbooks and memorizing wordless, those don't work. They're not good for language learning in general. But there's another problem with those methods. Most people find them very boring. For most people, those old methods, those school methods, are also very demotivating. It's the opposite of motivating. If something's motivating, you get excited about it. You want to do it more. If something's demotivating, you want to do it less. You get bored. You're tired. You don't like it. And... There are a few people, I will, you know, I admit there are a few people. Sometimes you will meet someone um, who f likes that stuff. You know, th these are people who become linguists, like get, they get a PhD in linguistics, okay? They love analyzing all the little grammar logic of each language. They don't even really care about speaking it well. 
They just love analyzing it and thinking about it like a math problem or something. So for those people, those old methods are motivating. They actually enjoy them. But that's a very, very small group of people. Most people like you, like I, find the grammar, translation, textbook methods to be very, very, very boring. Very boring, demotivating, stressful. And then you add all the tests from schools that create a lot more stress. Um, so number one, they don't really work. They're not they're slow and ineffective, but I think even worse, the worst thing about the school methods is they kill your motivation. They kill your enjoyment, right? So this is why you see so many people around the world, they become adults and they hate English. Ah, oh, I hate English. Ah, oh, English is boring. English is difficult, uh, right? This is a very common attitude. Well, it's because they use these methods in school and they learn to hate English. They learn that English was stressful and boring they became demotivated by these bad methods. And because of that, of course, they're not, they don't improve because they stop. They stop. At the beginning of the show, I was talking about my Spanish. So, you know, like I said, there is kind of a good story. Good, it's like good news, bad news, we say in English. Good news and bad news. Right? It's a situation that has a good part and a bad part. So the bad part of my Spanish learning is that I quit four and a half years ago. You know, I went, I had, a, I was very motivated. I, because I was going to Spain and I did this great trip to Spain and I had the goal of, you know, surviving in Spain with Spanish and I did it. But then what happened is after that, I kind of, I lost my motivation. It just disappeared. I didn't care anymore. I wasn't, I was moving I, was, I started focusing more on Japan. Uh, I had no plans to go to Spain or any other Spanish-speaking country. And I just became, you know, I got focused on the business. Many different reasons, but I lost my motivation. So the point is, what happened? I stopped doing Spanish completely. No listening, no reading, no speaking, nothing. Four and a half years of nothing. So that's the bad news. I stopped. I lost motivation, so I stopped improving. But of course, I've said, as I've said recently, there's a good side to this story. And the good side is that recently, inspired by Steve Kaufman, I decided to test my Spanish. I said, well, I kind of had a feeling in my mind like, you know, oh, I'm sure I, I, I'm probably I have lost so much of my Spanish now. Probably if I listen to the audios now, I won't understand much. And oh, I've lost it. So I tested myself and I was very, very happily shocked and surprised that after four and a half years, zero Spanish, that basically I still understand everything that I did before. I lost maybe 10%, very little. That I can listen to all those all old audios that I used to listen to, the stories, the audiobooks. I still understand them. I can read Spanish. My Spanish uh, reading ability is basically the same. So four and a half years, I lost almost nothing. And that's amazing to me. And that's very motivating then, right? Because then you, then it's a feeling like, wow, you realize any effort, any time, anything I do, I will never lose it. So, it beca so then you don't feel so much. You're like, if I can do 10 minutes, I'll do 10 minutes because I won't lose it. And so that's, for me, very exciting and very motivating. So you, we, we've got to focus on this and... As you go through, as we're doing our challenge, you know, this has been uh, another good thing about the challenge is that it really kind of tests your motivation, right? Because we're, do we're all trying to do a lot of extra hours. And four months is, it's not super long, but it's long enough. It's long enough to get bored, right? And I've already in had this problem with my Japanese that at a couple points I started getting bored. Like I was super, mo probably the first six weeks, I, I was doing like seven hours a day, bah, 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 motivated, motivated, no problem. And then at about that time, about six weeks, suddenly I started getting bored, right? Because I, I was repeating the same exact audios every day. That's like seven hours. That's a lot. And finally, you know, it's like something changed in my brain and, my, and I just decided, oh, I'm bored. I'm sick of these. I'm sick of these same audios all the time. I need something different. But so it's, so what do you do? You have, to, you have to listen to yourself. You have to notice this. Whenever your motivation drops, you have to make a change. You have to do something different. There are diff and there are many ways to do this. But basically, when your 
losing motivation. Your brain is looking for something new. Your brain is looking for something interesting. Your brain is looking for a feeling of success. Usually it's these things. So sometimes we lose motivation because we feel we're not improving. Like we f we might be improving, but we're not feeling it at all. We're not noticing it all. And that is demotivating. A second big reason we lose motivation is where we stop enjoying it. We get bored and tired and that makes us want to stop. So you have to notice this. Don't ignore that. You know, you know, don't I, I've learned this. I so I tried to just force myself. I don't care. I'm just gonna keep going anyway. Arr! But it doesn't work because eventually, you know, like there's a part of our brain, unconscious, whatever, that just says, no more, I don't care. And even when I tried to force myself to listen, then my concentration would just be gone. I would have I play the audios, but then I'm not really focused on them because my brain would just be distracted. I didn't want to hear them anymore. And, you know, I, I repeated each of those many stories at least 50 times, some of them 70, 75 times. So I got a lot of repetition already. So it was a sign. And so finally I realized, okay, I, I have like two choices. I'm going to just, I can try to force myself and get more and more bored and frustrated. And probably then I'm just going to quit. Because I know that's, I know myself and I know that's what most people do. Or I got, I have to make a change. I've got to figure out some way to make the Japanese interesting and fun again and enjoyable. And so that's what I did. I just changed. It's, I don't know what I'm doing now. It's probably not the most efficient. Okay. But I just decided take a break from the mini stories for a while. I mean, you know, I've already gotten a lot of repetition from it. And I changed over and I focused on manga now. I mean, uh, on anime. I'm watching anime and dramas. It's all much too difficult for me, but you know, every, each each anime I watch, each episode I watch, I I try to at least get a few extra words, like try to learn or at least notice. I, I don't, I may not remember them, but at least notice a few extra words, write them down, you know, use a dictionary, try to remember. I usually forget, but at least it's something. And of course, I'm still at least hearing Japanese. I'm at least hearing and understanding the very common words that I already know. So it's reinforcing that, making that stronger. So it's better than quitting. It's better than quitting. Probably the mini stories are much better for actually learning, but I'm just a little tired right now. I need a break. And so I'm focused on that now. So I just changed over. I'm watching TV and anime in Japanese. So it at least is keeping it fresh in my mind and I'm picking up a little vocab. And what most important, my motivation's back again. I'm enjoying it again because I like the stories. It's interesting. The anime is interesting to me. The dramas are interesting to me. So I'm still enjoying Japanese and I'm still doing it. So that is very important. And then on the Spanish side, you know, I'm, I'm completely focused on just this, just enjoying Spanish. So I've been reading mostly, as I said, graded readers, and that's great. No stress at all. I really like it. And then I just decided I got, I told you yesterday, I bought Oscar's, uh, my friend Oscar, Unlimited Spanish. He has a, four, a new course, a fourth course. It's kind of focused on more, uh, it's still stories. It's mini stories, but uh, more advanced. It's kind of, I think it'll be perfect for me. So this gives me some new listening for Spanish because I need some new listening. I, I find that I don't want to go back and listen to the same stuff because again, Four years ago, I repeated those stories. I repeated those audiobooks so many times. So I'm looking for new stuff now because it's just, I'm interested in it. So his new course looks interesting and fun. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm enjoying these books, reading that. So keeping it fresh, keeping it fresh. And then later, maybe I'll go back and when I, if I feel like it, I might go back and go back to the mini stories again and get more repetition after I have a break for a while. So I encourage you to do exactly the same. We ha you have to constantly be doing this. Managing your motivation is very important. Okay, very important. So if you love these shows, these podcasts, great. Do them. Keep doing them. If you love reading, you're enjoying reading, do that. If you get tired of reading, change to something else. Constantly focus on your motivation. It's more important than your grammar or a test score or anything else is to keep your motivation high. That will help you most for your long-term success. All right, let's just go in now and look at our comments and questions. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Leandro already trying to get me to go do another language. What about Portuguese? Why don't you try it? Um, I'm. <laughs> I would like to. The languages that I would like to do right now is Japanese, Spanish, and after S Spanish, I'm interested in Italian, I'm interested in Portuguese, and I'm interested in Thai. But it's too much. I can't do all those at the same time. <laughs> okay. I think that Spanish, Spanish will debt, not I think, I know, Spanish will help with Portuguese and Spanish will help with Italian. So my goal now is just to work on Spanish for a while and get it up to a higher level, like a B2 uh, you know, high intermediate, where I can really talk well, which I can't do right now. Um, and then at some point, yeah, maybe Portuguese in the future. Because, you know, mainly because there's so many Brazilian effortless English members. Yeah, well, Taruku... Tariku, sorry, is saying every day we stay motivated. Sometimes we lose motivation. We get depressed. How can we stay motivated? Well, that's what I'm saying is that when you lose the motivation, you have to make a change. Don't quit. Make a change. So if you have been focusing on, I don't know, very serious study and uh, doing a lot of repetition and deep learning and very serious, then maybe don't quit. Just instead watch... TV and movies, do the movie technique if you want to or not, listen to some fun podcasts and just take a, just do kind of easy, do easier stuff, right? You just got to change. Don't, instead of quitting, you change what you're doing. Or maybe even focus on talking for a while. Find a partner, a, a conversation partner. Yeah, Paulica says, I found out that many of Steve Kaufman's videos are motivational. If you're on a, in a plateau, I recommend try them. Yes, I agree. I watch them myself for motivation. <laughs> uh, okay, common problem here. Faringet says... Uh, I study university. I don't know why. Here at the university, they teach using school methods. About English, they just use tests, reading uninteresting and unnatural stuff. What should I do? Well, if you want to continue in your program, if you have to do this, that's okay. Just do it. Do what you have to do to pass, okay? If you've decided to, you need this degree, fine. But then in your, in your other, in your free time, outside of school, that's when you should be using effortless English methods. You should be reading fun and interesting stuff in English, watching movies, listening to podcasts, listening to mini stories, all of those things, okay? So outside of school, in your free time, use the methods that are enjoyable and motivating and that work. Yeah, and see, Yutaro, exactly. In a way. Even when you're less motivated, it's better to do something than quitting. A long break can completely break motivation. Yes, you lose the momentum. That's what happened with my Spanish. I had great momentum before the trip to Spain because I knew I was going, so high motivation. And then during the trip to Spain, of course, I was using Spanish every day. But then after, see, I, th I didn't just say I'm going to quit. I just kind of, oh, I'll take a break. I'm going to take a break for a while. Because I, I, you know, after Spain, oh, I'll take a break. And then, of course, I, one week break became a two week break. And then it was three weeks. And then it was a month. And then it's four years. <laughs> so this is the problem. It, what I should have done is I should have just uh, changed what I was doing. I should have completely changed everything I was doing with Spanish, continue doing Spanish. But maybe if I wanted a break, I should have just uh, done some easy uh, reading. And that's all. That, that probably is what I should have done. Then I would have continued with Spanish instead of quitting for four years. But, oh well, it's done is done.
Okay. Uh, Julia is starting to feel tired because of our challenge. Okay, Julia, good. Um, and Julia's been doing a lot of hours. So Julia, you know, just like me, I had this, I hit kind of, in running, they call it hitting the wall, right? In a marathon. It's usually around, I don't know, mile 20. And you suddenly, we say, hit the wall where, ah, uh, your body and your mind just gets really tired suddenly. And this can happen in a challenge like this, where we're, especially those of you who are doing large number of hours a day. So when you hit the wall, and I hit the wall at six weeks, and uh, I kind of hit another second wall, um, kind of when my babies were in the hospital. So what you have to do, that's when you have to just change everything. Change everything. Do, do a lot. Do Change the materials. Change what you're listening to. Change what you're reading. Change the difficulty. If you were doing difficult stuff before, change to doing easy. If you were doing easy before, do more difficult. Change the topics. Uh, change your foot. Maybe if you were reading a lot before, change the listening. If you were listening before, mostly, change to more reading. Change it all around. Okay? Do some different things. You can even change your schedule a little bit. Do it different times of day. And if you need to, re reduce the hours, but don't eliminate. Right? Instead, if you're doing eight hours a day, that's a lot. You could drop down to three hours a day for a while, but not zero. So try all of these things, and I think you'll find it can kind of bring some freshness back. And the other thing I did, and this was Steve Kaufman's uh, direct advice, this is why I added Spanish. Uh, number one, I was curious, and I was excited that my Spanish is still alive, you know. But the second reason was it that gives me a little freshness, too. When I'm really getting tired with Japanese, then I, I'll jump over and I'll do a little Spanish. I'm mostly doing Japanese. You know, like right now, Spanish is, you know, we would say, my minor language. It's I'm putting in a just a small amount of time with Spanish. But it, it one of the nice things about it, it gives me a little break. And the other nice thing is after doing a lot of Japanese in a day, which is very tough for me, then switching to Spanish feels very easy. <laughs> okay. Reading Spanish feels super easy after doing Japanese for my, several hours. So it's also that change. I'm changing for something that's quite difficult and new and I'm a low level and then I switch over to Spanish reading especially is very easy okay we jump down to the bottom here you guys are typing fast Nasser says, what if you stop completely for a while, then go back? Does it help? I don't think it helps, but uh, but like I said, the good news is you, if you're using effortless English, if you're using natural methods, you won't lose so much. Like with my Spanish, I was very happy. Four and a half years is a long time for with zero Spanish. And so to listen to the same audios again, like audio books, not just easy, super easy stuff for me. Uh, I mean, for a native speaker, it's very easy stuff. But uh, but anyway, to go back and listen to those same audios again and to understand 90% still after four and a half years, that is quite impressive. And it's not because I'm some like a genius. It's because the methods work. You really acquire it. You really learn it deeply and you don't lose it when you're using these methods. And that's so motivating, I think. Is Russian on your list to learn? I'm a little scared of Russian, Vladislav. I've heard it's very tough. <laughs> it sounds cool. Okay, Hemant says, How do I motivate myself when I listen to news anchors or native speakers? I lose my confidence. Because uh, I don't sound like a native speaker. Okay, so this is a common thing. And you have to be, this is where we have to be a little careful. And again, this is about managing your motivation. You have to notice. So sometimes it can be motivating to try difficult material, right? It can be. It can be kind of fun. Like it's a puzzle. It's a big challenge. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm doing that with Japanese right now. I was getting bored with repeating the same stuff. So I'm actually doing, you know, the anime and the dramas are, you know, really way 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 too difficult for me okay very 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 difficult but 
I'm enjoying it. It's a little bit of a, it's kind of fun challenge. I'm just learning little individual words or little tiny phrases. I'm not getting the whole thing. I'm using, sometimes I I'll check the English subtitle, get the general idea, what's happening in the story. But, um, but it's kind of fun because it's different than what I was doing before. So it's a, it's a fresh challenge. However, you have to be careful because sometimes when you jump up and try to do something that's quite difficult, it can have the opposite effect. And this happened in Spanish. I tried to watch a Spanish drama, uh, I don't know, last uh, four days ago. And I was feeling really good about my Spanish, feeling very motivated. And I watched this drama and they are speaking so fast and I'm getting nothing. You know, and Sp- you know, Spanish is Spanish is a language. It, it's a very people who speak Spanish, native speakers, they speak very fast. I know every language feels like they are speaking fast, but Spanish is super fast. Even though I'm a higher level in Spanish, Spanish feels faster to me than Japanese. Japanese people, I don't think, speak so fast. They, they, I don't find Japanese speaking for most people to be very fast. It has other difficulties, <laughs> but that's not one. But Spanish, that's one of the major difficulties for a Spanish learner is how fast they speak. It is so fast, and it was way too fast for me, and I was getting nothing. So here's the problem. It, I had the same feeling, like, come on. Suddenly, my high motivation just dropped down very low, and I felt, oh, my God, I, I'm never going to understand this. And it was killing my motivation trying to listen to that. And so at that time, I just decided I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do this. You know, may, later. I can do it later. I'm gonna, I want to build up my vocab. I'm going to go back because I was enjoying the reading. I was enjoying just, you know, audiobooks. And I'm just going to stay focused on that. This, vid, this drama right now is way too difficult for me. So, But later, maybe in a year from now. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, I'm not going to do it because it's killing my motivation. But that might change. Who knows? Maybe three months from now, I'll be interested to go back and try or try another drama. Maybe it was that, just that one. Because I remember four years ago, I watched a drama. Uh, not, I mean, a comedy, actually. It was a Mexican comedy called Los Cuervos about a soccer team. It was, it was kind of funny. And I liked it. I enjoyed that a lot. So you see, it just sometimes it's your mood. Who knows, right? But you have to just notice. You have to know yourself. And when you see, when you're trying something, you're doing something, and you start that, getting that feeling of your motivation just crashing, and you're getting really unmotivated or depressed or bored or frustrated, don't keep doing it, okay? Just take a deep breath and change to something else, okay? You can always go back to that. It's the same with a book. Maybe you get a book in English, like you get Brave New World. Yeah, you're excited. You watch the movie cl- uh, the book club. I'm going to read Brave New World. And you get it and you start reading it. And then you're reading it. And you're like, oh my God, this is so strange. This is difficult. And you start getting more frustrated, more frustrated, more depressed. This is so difficult. It's too difficult. Stop. Okay, don't force yourself to keep going if you're starting to feel that way. Just stop. And look, you have the book, so just do it later. Maybe you can do it next year. You could try again. Okay? In fact, that's, and it's kind of a cool feeling, actually. It's kind of a cool feeling that you get something like a book or an audio, and you try it, and you just like, this is impossible, this is terrible, oh, and, it's, and you're depressed, and you just push, you push it away. And then like a year later, you've been doing things, and you say, oh, maybe I'll, I'll try that book again. And then you try it again, and it's not tough, it's actually fairly easy. And you read it, and it's no problem. And then you realize, oh my God, I have improved. I really have improved. Last year, I know this was this was impossible for me. And now this year, it feels very easy. And that's that will increase your motivation quite a lot. So don't, don't get upset about these things. Okay, there's so much, especially for English. There's so much material, so many books, so many audios. Don't focus on just one thing. If the one thing is making you depressed or frustrated, Take a break, do something else. Okay, find something easier, find something more interesting. Like maybe for my Spanish, maybe I just didn't like it because it was a drama. I don't know. I'm not quite sure, but I, it, I, it got, I got really frustrated. 
Maybe the Mexican show was easier. I'm not sure. Or maybe just because it was funny, I didn't care about the difficulty. I'm not sure. But you get the idea. Just change. Just change. Just save it for later. Save it for later. Don't get upset. Ah, oh, well, this is nice. Julia says, I, it's much easier for me to keep motivation if I know my family needs it. For example, I wish my kids have fluent English. I feel free in it, so I need to get mine and speak to them. Yeah, well, you're right. You're right. I, that's my motivation with Japanese is family, to speak to family. Uh, for me, it's my nieces and nephews, father-in-law, mother-in-law, you know. Uh, that's, the, that's what get, keeps me motivated. Oh, Kinoko asked about pronunciation. A couple of days ago, you mentioned native speakers pronounce what are you doing as what you doing or what are you doing? Which one is correct? They're both. They're both common. Both, both, both. So, so when people say this phrase very fast, sometimes it's with like that CH sound. What you, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Other people say what are you? What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? They're both, it's the same meaning, same phrase. It's just a different pronunciation of pushing all the words together. So it's the same. Okay. Ah, uh, what about doing a write, writing motivation? You know, I don't really teach writing, but uh, um, I'm back lagging behind at writing. So first of all, that's common. Okay, writing is the most difficult skill technically, and it's the most difficult. Diff most demanding skill, meaning you have to be really kind of perfect. It's uh, in some situations you don't want to make mistakes. Um, so writing's tough in that. And for this reason, you know, even for native speakers, you know, writing is difficult. You know, I have a, uh, a friend, for example, who's a native speaker. He's obviously fluent in English. He speaks English perfectly, you know, as a native speaker. So his listening's obviously also native speaker. And uh, his reading, he reads fairly well, but his writing sucks. He's not a good writer. He's terrible. His spelling is terrible. He's native speaker. He's American. Okay, so it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to, to, to write well, even in your own language sometimes. So again, I would don't get too upset about it. Writing 200 words daily, you said, I promised myself to write 200 words daily, but I didn't commit. So I'd say, again, don't force yourself. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Okay. It's, it's a good idea. You, you say you made a goal. I'm going to do 200 a day. And then you find, oh, I'm trying it and this just sucks. I don't like it. So just stop. <laughs> Maybe you just got to find another uh, practice. Or, you know, as such in what you can do, reading a lot. Reading like literature, you know, reading stories and nonfiction even. Reading books, in other words. This will help your writing ability. It will improve your writing ability. Just, just the way listening eventually improves your speaking. Also, reading is the foundation of writing. So if you're not enjoying the writing right now, maybe just do a lot more intensive reading. Elena says, where can I find a German AJ? I want to continue learning German. Cool mini stories. Um, There might be somebody. I think I've... Anyway, in the comments, if someone knows about a German teacher who's using like effortless English methods, mini stories, natural way, all these things, if you know of German program, please put it in the comments. Because I know Spanish, obviously, Oscar. I know Japanese. Um, German, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, so like easy and fun English says. 
Related topic, I, I lost my motivation to finish my degree because most of the time, lots of tests that don't, that are not useful in the real world. I'm just focusing on what makes me happy. I get it. Oh, I understand that one. I almost didn't finish my master's degree in social work, my first one. Almost quit. <laughs> I finally decided to do it. But uh, I was very unmotivated for these reasons. I, it was my second year of the master's program. I was so bored with it. I realized it was nonsense, most of it. And, oh, I had a bad attitude. <laughs> but, um, and I had just gotten back. I traveled to India. That was my first time traveling abroad. It was uh, between, it was in the middle of my master's program in social work. And I was like, oh, I just want to travel. I don't, I don't want to do all this. But, you know, kind of logically, the, my logical mind told me, well, this is good for making money. Uh, this you if you get this degree you'll get better jobs you can have a better income so you can af you can save money for more traveling if you don't get the degree then you won't make any money and so I you know so I did it I just did it even though I wasn't liking it and sometimes we do that sometimes you you just rationally make a decision and emotionally you're not liking it but you realize it's the right thing to do sometimes we have to do things that are unpleasant but because the result will be useful. Oh, this is cool. Hanani says, uh, I work in a library. I always listen to you even while working. Most of the books you recommend are located in the library. Great. Thank you, coach. Time and effort. Well, that's fantastic. What a good job for learning English. You just get, yeah, get those books. Just, just play around. Any book that looks interesting, read it. Yeah, and see, Lisa's doing kind of, she's, right now, Lisa says, I'm keeping my motivation by reading stories, watching movies, just for fun. There are always other interesting stories. I'll be back soon to repeat the Effortless English lessons for deep learning. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm doing with Japanese, right? I was hammering. I mean, I was bam, 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 bam. Deep, deep, deep learning. Huge repetition of those stories in Japanese. And then I just hit a wall, and my brain just like said, enough. <laughs> No more. <laughs> and uh, so I said, okay, well, I'm just going to change. So now I'm doing anime and dramas and a little. I'm still studying kanji, you know, flashcards a little bit. I get bored with the flashcards, but I do a little to learn just for the reading. And then I'll go back. I'm sure I'll go back to the mini stories soon. And I'll go back to other stories that I have. And I'll do more repetition, repetition, repetition. And then when I get tired of that, I'll jump back again and do more anime. So boom, boom, boom. You can just jump back and forth as you need. This is what's great about being an independent learner, right? If you're in school, you can't do this. They tell you what to do. You have to study this. You must memorize this. This will be on the test. You can't manage your motivation this way. If you get bored, you still have to do it. But as an independent learner, you're the boss, so you can change in just any day. You can just change everything you're doing. It's really nice. It's why one reason that it's uh, so much more powerful. Oh, B2 level, asking what is B2. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking here. Is is distant level language B2? Okay, these letters, it's a European system for, uh, you can look online, okay, European language, foreign language uh, ratings. And it's uh, just, it uses the letters A, B, C. Uh, and it's basically just beginner, intermediate, advanced. You know, if that's, I usually just use those common phrases instead. So there's A1, A2. That's like low beginner, high beginner. There's B1, B2. Low intermediate, high intermediate. And then there's C1, C2. Low advanced, high advanced. That's all it is. It's just a, it's just a system. We're kind of giving a general idea. How much do you know the language? <laughs> the best way of improving English is dating. Maybe. All right, a few more. Ah, oh, here we go. German, the person who asked about German. Thank you, Vong. 
Vong Tien says, German learning with effortless method by Lucas Kern. That's with a K. K-E-R-N. It's called Learn German Easily. There you go. Thank you. German. Oh, okay. And there's Vladislav also following up. Oscar at Unlimited Spanish on his website, unlimitedspanish.com, has some recommendations for other language. German, he recommends the course Lick Deutsch Learning. Okay, there you go. So another recommendation for German. <laughs> I, I know this feeling too, Albert Amani. Albert Amani says, I, when I'm walking around, I do the shadowing technique. People look at me and smiling. Yeah, like you're a crazy person, I think. Who was it? Uh, Ken N.T. says uh, that, that they people think I'm crazy. Yes, I do. I sometimes do that. I do this at a park, you know, saying something when I'm doing if I'm doing shadowing, you know, people kind of a little bit. But I usually st I do it very quietly when I'm around people. Sometimes I just do it in my head. <laughs> Yeah, Albert Amani says this very well. Speaking of writing, Albert Amani, you, you write very well, by the way. The four skills are highly interconnected. Reading helps with writing. Listening helps with speaking. Yes, perfectly said. That's right. Ah, in with a personal question. Do you like Kurosawa movies? I think you'll enjoy and learn Japanese at the same time. I love Kurosawa movies. Those old... I love all those old samurai movies. Oh, I love them so much. So yes, they're on my list. Um, right now I'm using dramas on this website called ANJ Sub. So like I think it's Anime J Sub is what it's short for, ANJ Sub. And why I'm watching on that site is they have all Japanese subtitles that I can click and find the meaning of the words, which is very helpful. <laughs> so just a straight... Kurosawa movie, it's, sometimes it's hard to find. They just only have the English subtitles and there's no Japanese there. Um, but I love Kurosawa movies, so I probably will. Sanjuro, uh, Yojimbo, those are two of my favorites. Seven Samurai, of course, is super famous. And there's a bunch of others. There's one called, I think it's called Red, not Red Lion. Uh, it's about a doctor. It's really good. Anyway, there are many good Kurosawa movies. Okay, a couple more, and then I'm going to go. Ah, thank you, Unique Oz says, I have been listening to your podcast on Spotify. Now I'm happy that I met you online. I'm from Turkey, Ankara. Thank you and welcome. Is that Sinead O'Connor on your... Hmm... Virkovsky says, I'm so conflicted and confused over a chunk of pronunciations of American English. I don't know what to choose. It decreases my confidence. I want to sound as pure American guy. So I would just, you know, for the pronunciation, fo just do the shadowing, you know, focus on shadowing and audio sources. I would say don't worry about looking at pronunciation in a dictionary. Um, yeah, don't do that. So just, uh, I think also that Matt from MIA has a good, a good, um, for someone at your level where you're kind of at a high level, he's got some good advice. He calls it a language parent. And basically what you do, you choose just, you choose one native speaker and you copy their pronunciation, right? You don't try to copy 10 different native speakers because they all might have a little bit different. So choose one person and just copy their pronunciation. So you don't know which one to choose? Well, choose the way the one person pronounces it. You could choose me, okay? I've got so many uh, podcasts. So you just copy my pronunciation. If you're not sure how, about a word, say it the way I do. It, you'll be right. You'll be correct. There might be. Or if you don't like my 
pronunciation, that's fine. Or if you want a British pronunciation, then choose a British person. Okay, but you should choose someone that has a lot of audios, right? So a lot of material and then do a lot of sh shadow them and copy them and copy that one person and try to sound like them. So I think this could help you. Then you won't be confused because you'll just sound like that one person. So here it says, I keep my motivation listening to your videos, but I make it on two times speed for better concentration. Well, be careful about that because it changes the pronunciation. So that's the problem with that. Uh, there are, I know there are some programs you can use that will speed up an audio without changing the pronunciation. But I think, yeah, be careful. Be careful with that. You know, I, my speaking is n a natural speed. It's not, I don't speak fast in general, but that's my natural speaking. Yeah, like Vladislav says, I've noticed myself, my English has always improved when I didn't have any English classes preparing for a test. During those classes, my English didn't improve much. School demotivates learning. Yeah, me too. Exactly. I mean, the, the time... What's strange, it's strange, is that often the time you're improving most is when you don't even think about it. When you're just enjoying the language the most, you're just, have, just enjoying it, you're not really thinking about your performance, you're not thinking about, am I getting better? You're just uh, having a good time listening and reading. That's often when you are making the most progress, when you're not, when you just forget about it. Again, this is the one of the kind of secrets, I guess, we could say, uh, superpowers of children is that they don't think about this stuff, right? If you take a child, put them in America, like from Japan, they'll start learning English and they're not thinking about their performance. They're, they're not worried about how many words they know. They're not worried about grammar rules, nothing. They're just, you know, watching cartoons and trying to talk to other kids and they're getting better and better and they're not even thinking about it. They're just trying to use and enjoy the language. That's all. So that's that's the best attitude to have, is to not get stressed about all this stuff. If you keep reading and you keep listening, you will improve. Absolutely, you will improve if you don't quit. If you're just doing lots of reading and lots of listening every day and enjoying it, you're going to improve. You will. And I have to remind myself also the same thing. <laughs> again and again, I have to remind myself. Uh, Carlo, off topic says, have you read books of Krishnamurti? I have. I'm familiar with Krishnamurti. Yes. He's got some good stuff. Interesting. Yeah, Ibrahim Ali is correct about for writing, that using a computer is easier than paper because you can use the spell correct. Yes, use correct spelling, guys. Use the spell check. <laughs> use it. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I don't know if I speak correctly or if I sound weird. Roberto Landi says. How can I understand at what point I'm at with English? Uh, how can I understand by now? I don't know if I speak correctly or if I sound weird. Well, uh, there's a few ways. Start talking to people, native speakers especially, like online. You can get some conversation partners, and uh, some of them will tell you. And if they're not understanding you, then you know something's wrong. The second thing you can do is uh, listen to an audio and then shadow it or read out loud and record yourself. Record yourself. Compare the recording of yourself to the native speaker, and you will hear a difference, and then that'll tell you too. How close are you? So these are two easy ways to do it.
yeah, having an outstanding model is, oops, Ahmad says, as a renewable source for motivation. This also helps. This is another thing. Sometimes we need a pep talk. Okay, this is a lot of what I try to do for you every day is to give you that little, you know, that little lift of motivation, just a little increase. You know, I need it too. When my Japanese, my motivation for Japanese or something's dropping, then I will. I'll go watch. A, I watch Steve Kaufman a lot because as uh, I think it was Paulika said, it's motivational. I watch a couple, few of his videos. Ah, yeah, yeah feel a little better and then back to Japanese again right and so I hope I do the same for you maybe you're dropping a little bit watch my podcast watch my show ah <sighs> you're feeling good again back to English and of course you're listening to English right now as you <laughs> all this is happening in English so it's kind of double a double benefit PB says you pronounce especially wrong. No, you're wrong, PB. You don't know what you're talking about. I'll give you a little advice. If you're a non-native speaker, be very careful about trying to tell a native speaker that they're wrong. You don't know. Listen. This is the school mentality because your teachers told you this or you look in a book or a dictionary and then you decide you think you know better than... A native speaker who was born speaking the language that's like me trying to tell a russian and trying to correct their russian it's like me trying to tell a mexican person you speak spanish wrong that's insane okay show some humility you are wrong okay so namaz says do you think some people think if they work hard, they will succeed? Uh-huh. I don't think so. On that way, you lose your motivation. Uh, okay, I think I, I think I see what you're saying. Um, well, I mean, working hard is part of it. Okay, because you can't be lazy. Okay, so there is some truth in that. Uh, hard work or determination, you know, just to... Uh, definitely can help you know you succeed in a lot of things in life but it's it's not the only thing this is the problem is because if you work hard but you're doing the wrong thing you're going the wrong direction well then you're just going you're just going to work hard and fail more <laughs> right that's the problem so i think that working hard is there's nothing wrong with that that's great but you need to also work smart right we say in English, there's kind of a phrase, especially in business, work smart, not hard. But best of all is to work smart and hard. <laughs> okay? Work smart and work hard. Do both, and this is the path to success. So, yes, I think first you have to re you know figure out so you're doing the right thing. You have a good strategy. You have a good plan. What you're doing is effective. It will work. It will be helpful. It will get results. And then you work hard doing that. Right? We're working hard with our challenge right now, putting in lots of hours, all of us extra hours, hopefully. That's hard work in some, in some ways, hopefully also enjoyable. But hard work can also be enjoyable. Um, so there's, hard work is good, but it's not the only thing. So I think what you're saying, Namaz, and I agree, is that it's not enough. Some people, they don't think enough. They just, oh, I'm going to work hard, work hard. But they're working hard doing something that's not useful that's not effective. So they're wasting 90% of their energy. They're working, working hard, but getting nowhere. And people do this with money a lot of times, right? Where they, they're working hard, working hard, working hard, but they don't get anywhere. They don't get any results. So that obviously is not good. That's kind of uh, foolish. Okay, well, this is a, a comment. Um, how many hours do I have to listen every day to improve my English listening? I would, I kind of like to say two hours is a minimum. You know, I think that's a nice level set. Two hours a day is good. You know, maybe one hour a day if you are already pretty good. But I, overall, I would say two hours is a nice amount of time. Two hours or more.
Salam says, I'm excited you're going to give us business English learning classes. I can't wait. Me too. I'm excited too. It seems like it keeps getting delayed. <laughs> my babies went to the hospital. My sister's coming, all these things. But well, it'll happen. It'll happen. Okay, a couple more, then it's time for me to go. Ali says, your English is very good. Well, I am a native speaker, so. That's probably why. Yeah, right, like Vladislav says, I've heard about a Russian family living in Germany. <laughs> Their son went to German school. He was taught Russian as a foreign language, but the Russian was his first language. But the teacher, the teacher still corrected him. Right. You see how the craziness of this. This is the arrogance of teachers, the arrogance of the education system that you have these German teachers who are teaching Russian as a foreign language who definitely are not as good as this kid, this guy who's a native speaker, and yet they're correcting him. Ridiculous. Stupid. They should have been asking him questions. But see, their pride, they have too much pride. I'm the teacher, right? It's insane. But this is it. People get arrogant. This is the, the arrogance of the school system of this position that I'm the teacher, therefore I must always be right and I must always be the big expert. You know, I saw this many times. And it's especially true with non-native teachers because they have a... Underneath it is they feel insecure, okay, because they know that their English is not perfect. And that's fine. It's, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. But they think it should be perfect. They think, I'm a teacher. I must be the big expert. So they, they are afraid to be real. They're afraid to show their mistakes. They're afraid to be honest about their mistakes and their weak points. So they try to pretend that they are these great, perfect speakers. I saw this in Thailand at a university I taught at where I watched a few classes of uh, some of the Thai teachers teaching English. And they were pretty good. I mean, they were good English speakers, but, you know, they made a few mistakes. Uh, and they would try to pretend like their mistakes were actually correct. And they would lecture the students about it. And mm, it, this is one of the reasons a lot of non-native speakers like to teach grammar, because it makes them seem like they're a big expert. They're teaching this grammar. It seems so complicated. And the students are like, oh, my God, this is so difficult. And it makes the teacher like he's up high, right? He's, he's the big teacher who knows this super hard, difficult stuff. And it's just ego. It's just ego. That's all it is. You know, I'm a native speaker and I make mistakes. I have no problem if I make a mistake. You know, this person who corrected me before is just wrong. Now, sometimes I do pronounce something badly. I, I do. Like, I, my mouth gets dry. Some words, if it's a new word for me. I might not know it. I might not know how to say it. I'll just, and I'm honest, I'll just say, I don't know how to say this word. I don't know. Um, so I have no problem when I make mistakes uh, saying it. But this, but that is wrong. And it's just one of those stupid things that these t uh, schools and teachers and some independent learners think. They, they think like it, they're trying to make their own ego big. Look at me. I know more than the native speaker, right? I'm correcting the native speaker. Ha ha. You don't say it especially. There's no K in that word. Yeah, no kidding. I know. I've I've talked about this in many shows, okay? It's a common pronunciation. It's a what we call a colloquial pronunciation that I would say probably most Americans, I would say probably over 50% of Americans add that K or X sound to the word. It's especially is also a correct pronunciation. It is the dictionary pronunciation, especially. But you will find that Americans almost always will add that K or K sound, ek, ex, especially, especially. I'd say that's the most common real English pronunciation. It's not wrong. So you have to be careful with this. And in English, especially, there are all kinds of weird pronunciations we have that are different than the spelling. So you can't just look at the spelling and say, oh, but there's no X in there. It doesn't matter. Okay, so yeah.
another reason I don't like the school system because there's too much ego. It's too much of this ego in there about I'm the big guy on top and these are the students, you're below me and I have to be always right and perfect. Ugh. Okay, a few more. I think, what time is it? 23. Okay, I've got five more minutes. Okay, Ali, so let's let's get back to our topic of motivation. This is a good question. How to focus in English when I read English, but I get very sleepy? Okay, well, that's a sign, right? That's a sign from your, let's say, your unconscious brain, <laughs> okay, <laughs> telling you, I don't like this material, whatever you're trying to read, you're really not interested. If you were interested, you would not get sleepy. So why are you not interested? Well, that's the question. You have to ask this question yourself. I don't know. Maybe it's too difficult. That's one possibility. You're trying to read something. It's really too difficult. Too many unknown words. You're just, your brain's just like, ah, I don't want to deal with this. It's too hard. It's, that might, that's one possibility. Another possibility, maybe it's boring uh, content. Maybe it's a boring topic, a boring story, a boring, um, you know, whatever. You're not really interested in it. So again, you have to choose something you're more interested in that's more interesting to you. Uh, and then a th another possibility, maybe it's too easy, but that's usually not. If the topic's good, you don't care if it's easy, right? But uh, then finally, it might be maybe you're just not, you're kind of tired of reading in general, and you should just focus on listening more for a while. Because like I said, that happens to me sometimes that uh, it happens with both. Sometimes I I'm doing so much listening, and then I finally just get tired of listening. Oh, I don't want to listen anymore. And so I'll change it. And like with Spanish now, I'm not really listening at the moment. I'm just doing reading only. And kind of the opposite with Japanese. I'm just doing listening only. And maybe I'll change those. But So just, you know, I don't know exactly why, but you can figure out. Kind of there's some possibilities. Yeah, right. Liana says, sometimes teachers can be toxic. It means poisonous. They know many things about a profession. They don't know the essence of it, which is the most necessary thing. Every profession has a secret. Oh, this is many, you know, many, 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 many things with uh, teachers uh, in the education system because they're disconnected, meaning they're not connected to the real world, meaning where, you know, the real topic. So, for example, so you have people in universities teaching business who really don't know anything about real business. They've never run a, their own real business successfully. They never built a successful business. And yet they're teaching these young people about this topic that they don't really know it. They think they know it because from all these textbooks and theories, but they really don't because the textbooks and theories are often wrong. And the teachers have no way to decide, is this a good theory or a bad theory? Because they have no real experience in the real world. And you see this with languages where the, you know, and sadly, in many cases, they're teaching a language they're not very good at. You know, like I would never teach Japanese. <laughs> okay. I would never teach Spanish. Honestly, I would never teach any language except English. Uh, but you've got a lot of people doing that and they they don't really know it they're not really they can't really use it or do it in the real world and yet they're giving all this you know doing all this stuff with trying to tell people what to do it's kind of disastrous and even that would be okay they don't have to be perfect i'm i non-native english speakers are okay they just need to just be more honest and uh have some humility you know all they have to say to their students is i'm not perfect in english you know i learned I'm not a native speaker. I make mistakes sometimes. I don't know everything, but I'm here to help you and motivate you. And all together, we're going to learn. We're going to improve together. I'll do my best. You know, I, my level is definitely is higher than yours. As the teacher, my, I do have a higher level than you do. So I'll do my best to encourage you and coach you and help you. And also, I will be trying to improve at the same time. See, that's an honest attitude where they could... That's totally fine. I, that's they can be very helpful in that way, 
right? It's only when they try to, I'm perfect and I'm the best and I don't make mistakes because I am a, I have a PhD in English. Hmm. That's the problem. The ego. Okay, one more. <laughs> All right, this is a perfect one to finish. Roberto Landi, I accept, says, Just want to thank you for all the material you provide for us. If you come to Italy at some point of your life, I'll cook pasta for you. I accept. <laughs> and I will. I will come to Italy. I, that is uh, almost 100%. I will go to Italy again. I've been there before. As I said, you know, uh, in the future... Once I'm happy with Spanish, Italian would probably be the next language I want to learn. Also, I'll, I will be homeschooling my children, and we will be learning a lot about ancient Greece and ancient Rome. So I definitely want to take my whole family to Rome and to Italy in general and to Greece. So we'll, we'll be in that part of the world. I accept your invitation. It might be a few years, but I accept. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. So the main point, keep your motivation high. You have to, and this is, you're kind of, you know, have to motivate yourself. You have to just watch yourself. Just be aware of your energy, your motivation. And when it starts dropping too much, you have to make a change. Don't ignore it. Don't try to force yourself, you know. Don't try to suffer and keep going. Just make a change. Instead of quitting, make a change. Change what you're doing. Make a big change. And get kind of you know do bring in some fresh things and make it all fresh again and this will ah, your motivation will come right back up all right lots of love to you i'll be back again tomorrow until then go to effortlessenglishclub.com join my vip program commit don't quit at effortlessenglishclub.com lots of love to you